While exploring Skyrim, you may come across a small settlement located on Whiterun's western border with the Reach. The settlement is called Rorikstead, and even though it may look like a plain old farming town, it actually holds a dark secret that players can discover if they take a deeper look into this town and its residents. Today we're going to be investigating this town and going through all the weird details that we know about this place. This video is going to cover some interesting things, so grab yourself some milk or whatever goes with Halloween and enjoy. As I said earlier, the settlement of Rorikstead is located near the Reach, which has a very dead environment with only a few small dry looking trees around. Yet for some reason, the harvest in Rorikstead seems bountiful. We can head over to one of the fields and speak to an Altmer woman named Reldith, who is seen tending to the crops. Let's see what she has to say. Your farm is doing very well. You must be proud. Do I detect a bit of jealousy in your tone? I would hardly blame you. What calling could be more noble than this? I see in your eyes that you think I jest. I assure you I don't. I am proud, and rightfully so, of the work we do here. Working the soil with your hands, seeing your seeds take root and grow, tending a herd. There is a joy in honest labor you won't find elsewhere. It looks like there's a surplus of crops here in Rorikstead. Where do you sell them? In Whiterun, mostly. Ennis handles the business arrangements, but I know that he has a few purchasers who give us a fair price. Ennis prides himself on his shrewd business schemes. For my part, I'm far happier working with cattle and crops than with people. Until next time. Reldith had mentioned someone by the name of Ennis, who we can find tending to the field just like Reldith. Need Sadly, we can't speak to him. Need something? After speaking to Reldith, we can conclude that the farm in Rorikstead is truly a miracle. It produces tons of crops and in such a harsh environment. I wonder how they do it. If we talk to Juan Manette, we can say, Okay, um, how did a Breton like yourself come to dwell in Rorikstead? Have you met Rorik? He owns these lands. And it's from him that our village gets its name. We've been friends for many years now. Rorik fought for the Empire in the Great War. He was gravely wounded, and so was brought before me. I was a healer then, you see. We were as close as kinsmen. And when Rorik returned home, I came with him. I'm happy to spend my twilight years here with my good friend. Your farms are thriving, even despite the harsh climate. What's your secret? Secret? What makes you think there's a secret? There are no secrets here, my curious friend. Our prosperity is simply the result of hard work, good fortune, and the blessings of the gods. Until next time. Okay, I see. Things are starting to come together now. Juan was a healer during the Great War that took place 26 years prior to the events of Skyrim. He had saved and eventually befriended a man named Rorik, who now owns this settlement and is the person it's named after. That would mean that this is a fairly new settlement, because we can assume that it was built either directly after or soon after the war came to an end. Although it was strange how defensive Juan was when we asked him about this town's, um, quote-unquote secret. Well, let's try finding Rorik. He owns the farm, so he must have the answers to all of our questions, right? If you've got some business in Rorikstead, you should start by speaking hey, to Hey Rorik, I heard you fought in the Great War. Is that true? Aye, that I did. I commanded a force of several dozen men, most of them levies from villages in this part of the hold. I damn near met my end in that war. An old merry soldier ran me through with his blade and left me for dead. A healer named Joanne saved my life. He's been my closest friend ever since. I tell you, that man is a miracle worker. Is the town of Rorikstead named after you? Yes, that's right. Look around you. Most of the lands you see are mine. Most of this I purchased while my comrades were fighting in the south, helping the empire against the Aldmeri Dominion. Back then, nothing would grow here, and so the land was worthless. Now, thanks to the hard work and the gods' blessings, our farms prosper. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Alright, so now we know that Rorik did indeed fight in the Great War, and purchased the farm sometime after, or close to the end. He mentioned that back in the day this place used to be worthless, because it would pretty much grow nothing. But now thanks to their hard work, and the gods' blessing, everything seems to be going well. A little too well, even. Well, I think we've spoken to all of the important residents of Rorikstead, so now let's take our little investigation a step further by breaking into people's homes and invading their privacy, to search around for any clues that can possibly lead us to finding out the truth about this place. The first place that we can investigate is a place called Cowflop Farm. A rather humorous sounding place if I do say so myself. This is the farm that belongs to Reldeth and Ennis that we covered originally, in the very beginning. Inside we can find something quite peculiar, a filled soul gem on the bedside table. Why in the hell would two farmers, Ennis and Reldeth, have a filled soul gem in their home? Well, things get even weirder when we enter Rorik's Manor, the big building which houses Rorik and Juan. When we enter, we don't see much right away, but if we go behind a counter, we can find yet another soul gem. Except this one is hidden away. But what's really interesting is the book that we can find right next to the soul gem. Spirit of the Daedra. So, is Juan or Rorik a Daedra worshipper? Is this the secret involved with the farm's sudden success? Well, there have been a few theories, so let's go through them all. You've got some business in Rorik. So the first theory is that Rorik is immortal. Yes, I know that sounds pretty strange, but there are quite a few sources that back this claim up. With the first being a book called Holdings of Jarl Gjallund, which can be found on Farangar's table in Dragon's Reach after you complete the quest Blake Falls Barrow. This book was published sometime in the First Era, making it very old compared to Rorikstead. Yet in the book, a place called Rorik's Steading, or Rorik Hofka in Dragon Tongue, is described as a small farmstead in the Western Plains, which produces grain, leather, and houses horses. This all seems to line up with the Rorik said that we can find in Skyrim in the Fourth Era, 201. So that leaves us with the grand question. If the town of Rorikstead is named after the man we spoke to earlier, then how was there yet another Rorikstead that matches up with this one pretty much perfectly so long ago? Well, it could be a developer oversight, but Bethesda has never done that. But maybe there was another Rorikstead in the exact same region that did the exact same things. But that isn't very likely, as well as the fact that it would have to have the same names and pretty much do the same things. But even weirder is what we can find in the book called Atlas of Dragons, which we can find in the throat of the world after defeating Alduin. This book lists the known dragons, both dead and alive. In the deceased section of the book, we can find this little section, Nahaglief. Local tales name him as the dragon buried in the mount west of Rorikstead, no date associated with his death, although almost surely dates to the Dragon War era. So wait, this book, Atlas of Dragons, mentions a dragon mound west of Rorikstead. Well sure enough, there is a dragon mound very close to Rorikstead, but this book is surely older than the 26-year-old settlement, right? And to add even more evidence to this pile, the traditional Nord song, Ragnar the Red, mentions a town called Ol' Rorikstead. So, um, yeah. How? A traditional song that we can assume was written way over 26 years ago mentions the current existing town? Doesn't make sense. Some players believe that Rorik is a Daedra worshipper who has somehow been keeping himself alive through all these years, and is even somehow causing crops to grow out of infertile land in terrible environments. Personally, I don't believe this theory because there's another theory that I find way more likely. But before we get to that one, there is another, way darker theory. This theory states that Juan, the healer, is also the owner of the Daedra Worship Book, as he is known to be proficient in magic and all that stuff. Now where am I going with this? Well, one of the 17 Daedric Princes is Clavicus Vile, or the Master of Insidious Wishes. What Clavicus Vile does is he basically lets you wish for something, and then he gives it to you, but he also takes something away. So some people think that, presumably, Juan had wished for fertile soil, but in exchange, Clavicus Vile had taken the fertility of the women who lived in Rorikstead. This doesn't really make too much sense, though, because we can see two children who are twins constantly running around the town. 
although their mother did pass away during childbirth. But that isn't really sacrificing their fertility because they still did have children. Looking back at Reldith though, she has an adopted son, Ennis, and not a child of her own. We don't know why, but it is possible that her fertility was taken away. Personally, I don't believe this theory because it's kind of weird, and if it was true, then there would probably be much more physical evidence that we could discover. So now it's time that we move on to the theory that I find most believable. Theory 3. Theory number 3 is what I believe is really going on in Rorikstead, and what quite a lot of other players seem to believe as well. Basically, I think that Juan is the owner of the Daedra Worship Book, and that he probably gave the Soul Gem to Reldith and is using them for some sort of Daedra magic that makes crops grow. No one except Juan knows this, which is why everyone seems to be so clueless about this. This is also why he's trying to hide the fact that he is teaching Sissel magic away from others. Juan is simply trying to help out his lifelong friend and his farm, and he seemed to be a kind person in his conversations with other residents. Overall, I believe that the mentions of Rorikstead in the old books were in fact referencing other towns which had the same name, as unlikely as it sounds. But I truly believe that nothing too sinister is going on in this town, and it's just a guy doing some Daedra worshipping to help out his friend's farm. So yeah, that's it for this short little video. If you enjoyed the first of our Spooktober special, then please um, leave a like and subscribe. Next up is going to be the Fallout Bombs Drop Day video, which should be coming later today or tomorrow, depending on when I upload this. But um, basically just very soon. Anyways, as I already said, I hope you enjoyed the video, and we hope to see you next time.